Are there any scenes in season three or even the seasons before that you felt like, I wish we really could have put that in and left that in, but we can't just due to time? Oh, and the deleted scenes? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, sure. I mean, there's all kinds. Of, now you're catching me off guard. Um, I'd have to really go through my memory bank on that. But there's a lot of things that are cut strictly for time overall in the show. And then there's things that sort of work, but you kind of feel like they disrupt the flow of the series. Um, and so you just you want the fans to be able to see them and you keep them in, de in the deleted scenes. Uh, I'm trying to remember something off the top of my head. I'm kind of blanking on it, so I'm not sure I can give you a specific example, unfortunately. That's okay. If we think about one at the end, we'll, we'll circle back around yeah, to please. it. <laughs> and so a lot of people we know is a very overwhelming female fan base. However, if you were to sell it to men or straight males, how would you sell this show to kind of get them into watching it? Well, I think it's a great show for, for everybody. It's a great show, you know, for, for straight men, certainly. And, you know, I, I think it's a great adventure show. Um, that was one of the things that appealed to me when I f read the first book was I thought I was fascinated with the strong female lead and sort of the, the feminine point of view, you know, that, that was present throughout the book. However, it's a great adventure tale. It's got plenty of, like, you know, fighting and action and sort of there's big political themes going on and there's just a, a big heroic struggles, you know, for both her and for him all the way through the, the entire series. So I, I really think it's the kind of a, a show that can appeal to everybody. It, it does remind me of when we were doing, when I was doing Battlestar Galactica and it was like, oh, this is a show for guys and how do you convince women to watch it? And essentially, if women tried it, they fell in love with it too. And I feel the same way here on Outlander. If men try it, they almost inevitably go, wow, this is a really good, interesting story. So part of it is you're just hurt a little bit by the perception that either of those things is, you know, supposed to be a guy show or this is supposed to be a woman's show. And it kind of works against you because in truth, the, both of these series work really well for both audiences, but there's, a per, there's sort of a block that keeps people from wanting to try it. So you mentioned uh, political themes, and we know that they're now into the American colonies. So do you feel like what, especially what Jamie, a foreigner in the United States, do you think that that would be playing into current events now? Do you feel like people will have a connection to him and the American dream? A little bit. I mean, they're both foreigners to an extent. You know, Claire is also from uh, Britain. Jamie's from Scotland. They're both coming to America, you know, for the first... I mean, Claire is... The irony is Claire's lived in America. She's lived in 20th century America and in the 60s. So she was in America at a time of great unrest and a time of great change in American society from the civil rights movement to the war in Vietnam to the to the burgeoning you know, women's movement at the time. So when she goes back in, uh, to the American colonies, she brings that perception of how things were then with slavery and the, you know, the American Indians being considered savages and so on and how that was going to change, but it was going to take a long time for that to change. And Jamie has more of the pure immigrant experience of coming from a place and a time where you know the the crown and the treatment of the of the Scots was really unfair and unjust, and going to America and seeing it as an, an opportunity and a place for you know for freedom and, and a diff and democracy in a different way. So you have these two points of view that both characters sort of bring to the moment of arriving on these shores, which I think is really kind of fascinating. You get to play, we get to play all those different chords and, and conflicts and sort of moral dilemmas that they face as you know as they live here. And so I know I've been pushing you with all these questions, were you able to think of any deleted scenes that you might want? No, I'm bad. You, you totally, you, you stumped the panel. I really, I'm sorry, I don't have a deleted scene at the top. She's going to know. Meryl's going to, she will definitely go, oh yeah, that scene and that scene and that scene should have been in the thing. I can't even remember what we deleted. I'm so, like, my brain is in season four at this point. I can barely even remember, what was season three again? You know, it's like it's so long ago. Because you're really hard at work, and so yeah. you have a lot of the more priorities in the forefront of your mind. It is. It's like you. T I tend to work where I am. You know, once and I've done this on all the shows I've worked on. Once I've delivered them and set them aside and done the podcast and delivered that show, it almost just vanishes from my brain until somebody starts asking me about it. And then I have to sort of go, "Oh yeah, what was that again?" Because it's like whatever I'm working on right now is what just sort of I, I concentrate on. Thank you so much for your time. Thank Absolutely. you.